I should say, which depict aliens. Um, and when I do my talks, I've actually taken them around with me to show people. And I say that the two questions here, one is, first of all, why would you use an alien on your badge when you're telling the public that they don't exist? Yeah. Um, and secondly, what, what is the link between this alien group and the badge? So, for instance, you might have um, a spy satellite, and it might be celebrating the launch of the 50th spy satellite. Well, why would you stick an alien on that? Yeah. So when I take these rounds and I say to people, you know, I don't know all the answers, but you know, there's something very fishy here mm. uh, because these are official, these aren't jokes, these are official yeah. patches that the American military wear on their day-to-day -day work. So if aliens don't exist, why are they being officially sanctioned? And this is what gets people just, you know, thinking as to questioning that their government's not being truthful with mm. them. Could you tell me a little bit about Carla Turner? Um, Carla Turner, uh, in my book, was one of the most genuine researchers the history has known into mm. ufology. Mm. Sadly, tragically, she died of cancer. Um, she interviewed a large number of people. She was also uh, a, an experiencer herself. Mm. And she was one of the group who felt that most aliens were negative. And mm. she went around the country talking wherever she could in America, warning people that sometimes the experiences they have and not really what's happening. So in other words, they're being tricked. Uh, she was an incredibly decent, mm. honest, uh, and very truthful woman. And it's a great shame that, um, you know, that uh, she's not around anymore because she had a perspective. Um, she had a very clear perspective based on a lot of interviews with genuine people who had contact with aliens. And there is a book out, it's called Into the Fringe. It's very difficult to get. You can probably better get it on... Um, uh, as, a, as a download or on a on a on a CD. Mm -hmm. I d I've got here. So, so th do you think she was bumped off? Um, a lot of people, uh, interestingly enough, can seem to contract cancer. Yeah. Who are involved in this industry, um, and we know that for the last twenty odd years there are um, handheld weapons that can induce cancer cells in people um, so I, though I don't have any evidence on her part it wouldn't surprise me in the least yeah do, do you know about a, a, a lad he's a lad called Rick Clay uh, no that's a name I don't know uh, this is a little kid on YouTube well he, he's dead now he, he was coming out with this that and the other uh, but he's, he's found him swinging but anyway, uh, I've, all I've got is all your underground bases are ours. Well, right. Why have I written that? Yeah, that that is. Um, you'd have probably seen one of the patches. Um, it's it's the one actually that where all the audiences when I go around the country touring, they're the one. That's the one badge they really hook on to, and it has the Earth and a massive dragon uh, with wings and a snake, and in. Uh, in Latin, because these things are always written in Latin, it says all your underground bases, uh, I think it's something like all your underground bases are subservient to us, or all your underground bases are owned by us. And it's basically saying that wherever you are, whichever country you are, um, we, the reptilian race, um, have control of your underground bases. Um, and again and again and again, the imagery is of dragons or snakes, and to a lesser extent, the grey, small grey aliens. But these are the three images that most appear on, on these badges. Reptiles, um, dragons, snakes, and small greys. Mm -hmm. So I've got a um, hat man, hybrid woman. Ah, um, hat man. He, 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 um, uh, he contacted me about two years ago he, in America. And we had about four or five phone calls, about five hours difference between, I think it was on the east side of America. Mm. Um, and he, he'd heard about me and uh, he said, you know, did I want to try and stop the aliens visiting me because he makes hats um, with seven or eight layers of this interesting material which uh, he claims uh, prevent um, alien mind control. Mm. So anyway, I said to him, no, it's okay, thanks very much for thinking of me, but I didn't see, in my particular instance, the, ne the need for that. 
Now, what set the alarm bells off in a nice way was that he then said, what aliens do you see? And when I said to him, oh, the, the mantis, I used the word mantis because he's American, mm. he immediately knew. He said, oh, well, my hats won't work for you oh. because they don't use that system, do they? And I thought, you know your stuff because you would only know this if either A, you actually saw these creatures, and I'm not going to say what it is in public, mm. uh, and I'll tell you why in a minute, or you either see them yourself or you're in the security services. So we had a number of chats and uh, he supplies people in Britain and America with these hats. And I think in Britain there are three school children currently who have special dispensation from their school to wear these hats all the time when they go into school. They don't take them off at class, they have to have them on all the time. Um, and it has an incredible effective um, results. We're talking about the small greys. Uh, greys, when they, they try to abduct somebody, they'll use their advanced mind power um, to try and enter a person's mind and take control of them against their will. So he, he doesn't even charge people. He just makes these hats and sends them. But what happened was that he told me that he worked for the military, a uh, special contractor, but he wasn't working for the military anymore. Anyway, cut a long story short, I then had a, a contact with a chappy friend of mine who's MI5 who said, you know what, this guy's still active <laughs> in, in the American... Uh, intelligence network so sure enough the next, next three or four days later he phoned me and I said I hear you're still active in um, the agency and do you know what he never phoned me again so he was another guy who was just interested in chatting to me but he makes a product he doesn't charge it's all done for free and mm. um, so it's a very very interesting world you know there are so many people with different agendas out there what about this hybrid woman that you had a driving lesson with? Right, well, he, the reason he phoned me, because uh, as a driving instructor uh, in England, he, he, the reason he contacted me, he said, do you know of this woman who's a driving instructor in the West Country who's giving lessons to hybrids? And I genuinely and honestly didn't know, and I mm -hmm. said, no, I don't know anything about it. And he said to me, well, are you giving any lessons to uh, human-alien hybrids? And I said, no, I'm not. Um, and he explained to me that this woman was waking up at 2 o'clock in the morning, going out, giving a lesson to this, 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 this um, human-alien hybrid at 2, two o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning, and then coming back. And I made the joke to him, and I said, you know what, I wouldn't need to do it at 2 o'clock in the morning. I'm quite happy to, to give one of these uh, creatures a driving lesson at 2 in the afternoon. Mm. Not a problem. But interestingly enough, about three months later, I was approached by somebody uh, who wanted a driving lesson. Uh, and as soon as she got in my car, I just looked at her, and I looked at her complete head shape, uh, completely the not human, and I knew what I'd got in the car straight away. Uh, she was not a very good driver. How, do you, how did that make you feel? Uh, intrigued, interested, because not, there's no, not such, scared. Thing, there's no right. such thing as coincidence. No. So I wanted to know why you have got in my car, mm. what is this about? Um, and are you going to tell me, or do I have to, like, drag it out of you? Yeah. So anyway, we've been in the car about 20 minutes, and then she just literally turns to me, uh, which I wasn't happy about, because I like pupils to keep their eyes yeah. on the road. Yeah. <laughs> and she said, do you know Dr. Stephen Greer? <laughs> so I said, well, I don't know him personally, but I know of him. And then we just spent the next rest of the lesson just talking about free energy, um, why the government's you know, I uh, want to promote oil, um, a whole range of stuff, which is totally bizarre for a yeah. driving lesson. Yeah. It's the first time in a pupil. But this was the clincher. At the end of it, she said, can I just drop myself off at the supermarket? I need to get some bits and pieces. I said, fine. So I stopped off. And, uh, you know, this is when they usually pay me. This is when a pupil would pay me. Now, this is a few years ago, so I was only charging £15 an hour which is very good yeah. and um, she didn't pay me and she got out of the car and I thought this is odd so I got out as well we were still talking and I said to her I guess this would be the time you should pay me £15 now you know what £15 is it's a £10 note and a £5 note mm. or a £20 note and you get £5 change she held out a £5 note £5 note to me now because I understand these creatures and I understand what's going on here I just took the five pound and said thank you very much indeed you see the thing is that hybrids don't 
they have to be educated. You have to teach them everything to do with what I call the 3D reality. And they can only get by on debit cards because they don't have a concept of cash. They can't understand how that works. So she was completely confused. She didn't know what 15 was. Oh. She picked up on the, on the five yeah. and handed me a five pound note, um, which is fine because the experience I'd had in that hour was excellent. You know, that was worth, you know, I'd have paid her for the yeah. opportunity to, to mm. sit with a creature like that. So you, you never seen her again? No, what happened was that I never saw her again. I had the address. I went back to the address. There was nobody in it. I went back a second time, nobody in it. I went back a third time, and this time I knocked on the neighbor's door. And they said, well, I don't know what you're talking about. The house has been empty for six months. And yet you had picked her up from the house? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she had two boys, two, two children. Mm -hmm. And then I phoned, it's actually a housing association, and I phoned the housing association who confirmed that the house had been vacant for six months and hadn't been let. So, you know, it's incredibly interesting, incredibly interesting. But what was funny was you go back to the alien hat man where I'd said to him, look, I don't have to give lessons to hybrids at 2 o'clock in the morning. Mm. I'll do it at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And this was at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. She'd booked a driving lesson at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Wow. So, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a funny old world, isn't it? Yeah. I wouldn't put a picture up of a reptilian on this morning. What, what was that about? Um, I did the... the um, with um, Schofield and um, Willoughby. Yeah. Um, the breakfast television show, 20 minutes. And um, they wanted some drawings of the two main creatures that I see. So, I, you know, they wanted them, so I did, did them. And uh, then the woman who was the link person between the producer came back to me and said, well, we're not allowed to put this one up. So I said, what do you mean you can't put that? Well, you know, why? She said, I don't know. She said, I've just been told we're not allowed to put it up, but we can put this one up. So hey-ho, they weren't allowed to put the reptilian one up, but they put the mantid one up. And it reminds me of David Icke, because in David Icke's book, which is called The Biggest Secret, he had a chapter entitled Don't Mention the Reptilians. Yeah. And what David Icke was talking about was that in high levels of government, you're not allowed to talk about the reptilians. So he was a major television channel refusing to put a reptilian up. I just thought that was interesting. Yeah, I've, I've only ever read Robots Rebellion um, of David Icke's, and I think if you, if you read that one, <laughs> that, that's the one to read, because he's, he's, he's everything in there. It's, it's when he, years ago when he, when he first kicked off, and he was just mad for it, you know, and, and it all went in that one. And then some of it was, you know, uh, completely, like, he's right off scale. But most of it, yeah, it's bang on. Um, what about this grid around the Earth? Um, yeah, it's not so nice, that, is it? No, no, I'm, I'm not into that at all. No, um, you know, sometimes the things I say, um, people don't like to hear it. Um, I would like people to, to imagine this as a prison planet. A mm. prison planet, and that's why there are so many nutters on this planet, so many bloody psychopaths and murderers mm. and just people just completely around the twist. Imagine, um, the you don't want people to escape. Now, I'm not talking about the physical bodies, I'm talking about our souls. So when your physical body dies, um, ideally, what makes you, you, your soul, should go back to source. Um, but it isn't. It goes up so far, and then it's caught in an energetic grid. And these are represented on um, lots of art through history. Certainly the American badges we've been talking about, they have them on them. Yeah. That's, yeah. And the, the soul is... Uh, zapped in some way and it forgets everything it's had on that lifetime and then you reincarnate in another body uh, one of the reasons for this can you imagine uh, uh, a guy like Albert Einstein if Albert Einstein had 60, 70 years 80 years on this planet died and then reincarnated into another body but remembered everything that he'd done in his first life his experiment wouldn't start from scratch yeah. they would carry on from where he left off because they get to remember don't they on other planets they yes. well if you think i mean i i when i was babysitting um freddie lennon's children that's john lennon's dad yeah. uh, when i was babysitting freddie lennon's kids david lennon 
was five years old mm. and he was playing a, a Mozart or a Beethoven concerto at five years old in the piano right in front of me, ten feet in front of me, with no music. How does a child that's five years old play a Beethoven concerto?